Hello everyone. Uh, we are students from Fontes for working on a project for advanced telecom, uh, the practical for the subject. And we uh, the group consists of uh, Mustafa Omid, Camilo Usa, Moses Budi Haji Yat, and myself, the narrator, Tabres Rawaddin. Today in this video, we're going to be walking you through the uh, software Smart SDR for the Flex Radio System 6500, which we have installed at the university today. With that being said, let's move on to the meat of the video. Uh, throughout this video, we're going to be discussing about uh, the differences, first of all, and then we will move on to the uh, software features and then the hardware features and after that will be followed by how to receive and then how to transmit at the end. Uh, this, the idea of this video is to give you a complete basic overview of how the flex radio system works with the smart SDR. The flex radio system is a digital radio uh, system for am uh, radio amateurs. Uh, the main difference between this and uh, conventional analog radio is that it allows for much more accessibility because it has a waterfall of the spectrum as well as a frequency distribution so the person knows what exactly they're doing. Uh, uh, the cons are compared to an analog system is that it's more expensive as well as requiring more hardware, for example a computer. Jumping into the software now, we can look at on the top side here. It's represented the uh, frequency spectrum, and in here, the peaks represent the, how strong the signal is. The stronger the signal, the higher the peak will go. And on the bottom, we have the waterfall. The waterfall represents a uh, signal's strength, as well as how much space it is occupying on the, ba on the band. Uh, looking at the waterfall allows you to distinguish how uh, a signal is responding, if it's an upper sideband signal or lower sideband signal. For an upper sideband signal, the signal will be more focused on the uh, right-hand side, indicating that it's, it's an upper sideband signal. For the lower sideband signal, it's a more red on the low, uh, left side, which indicates a stronger signal on the lower side. Uh, moving on, uh, there's also the, f uh, on the right hand side, there's also functionalities. For example, TX is for transmission, RX is for receiving, there is EQ for an equalizer, and there's other uh, functionalities like the PC and W, and uh, AM carrier, delay, things like that. Before we move on to the receiving and transmission aspects of the radio, we, uh, it is important to know uh, some of these uh, functions, what they do on the right-hand pane. Uh, the indicator here for RF power and SWR indicates the, their respective values. SWR stands for standing wave ratio and is very important to keep this low, otherwise it could damage the antenna. Uh, before And also to have the uh, ATU active, this allows for the optimal transmission and also keeps uh, everything uh, nice and, and low in terms of the SWR. Uh, underneath here we have the pane for the receiving side and here we can choose what kind of signal we are expecting to receive. For example, LSB stands for lower sideband, upper sideband, AM, FM, whatever we're trying to receive, we can set it there. Also we can set what our current frequency is that we are receiving as well as set a certain pan range for it, wide or narrower, based on the signal. And another key thing that is uh, required to know before operating is the NATO alphabet. As for all names and every discussions uh, that are being done on the radio, uh, the NATO alphabet is used. Now, let's start with receiving. Uh, at the university, we have two antennas. Uh, one is a 40 me meter and one is a 20 meter. Right now, we're using the 40 meter because it's better quality. It's a spider uh, antenna. The range the, that we are allowed to uh, listen to and broadcast is from 7.0 megahertz to 7.2 megahertz. And uh, for the signal itself, when you see something, you look at the peaks, and that tells you on how strong a signal is. After that, the, the waterfall gives you a lot of information uh, based on what the nature of the signal might be. For example, uh, here we see a centered frequency with multiple uh, things on both lefts and right, multiple waveforms on left and right. This is probably an AM signal, which you can find out by fine-tuning on the mentioned uh, drop-down menu earlier. As you can see, there's a lot of options. Uh, usually when you're communicating with another radio amateur, it's usually sing uh, 
upper side band or lower side band. Uh, the indication of an upper lower side band signal is the uh, right hand side over here. As you can see, it has a much stronger concentration of the signal represented by a green and red indication uh, compared to the uh, signal concentration on the left. The, sing the indication of an upper side band signal would be if this signal was reversed. Now let's see if we can listen to someone. There is something over here and we can use the mouse scroll wheel to, to fine tune our signal uh, centering which is represented by this yellow line. Once we have something centered we can also adjust the filter width using the numbers represented on the dial here and we can also fine tune a little bit more to see if we get anything. If a pitch sounds much more robotic then you have to tune down and if a pitch sounds much too deep, then you have to tune it higher. Let's see if we can find a signal now. Apparently it seems that nobody is communicating, communicating at the moment. After you're satisfied with where your frequency is centered, you can move the filter range back and forth. This allows you to very finely tune out other signals that might be interfering with the or signal that you're trying to listen to. And as well, you can move it around with the adjusted filter. Now for the final topic, we will discuss about transmission. For transmission, it is important to keep in mind the two things uh, that are in the transmission box over here, RF power and uh, standing wave ratio. Uh, you do require a low standing wave ratio in order to not damage the uh, antenna as discussed above, as discussed previously. And uh, for this, the ATU is a great help. As soon as you initiate the ATU, you will hear uh, multiple clicks going on in the background, as well as the transmission coming on for a short amount of time. Uh, this allows the this actually sets up the radio for optimal transmission and the, with a low SWR. Uh, before you even start transmitting, you need to test out your microphone, and for this, you should find a uh, empty spectrum as we have here, which is not in use and you need to lower your RF power to something like 15 and after that clicking on MOX you will, you will begin to transmit and then you should be watching the SWR to make sure it's not high and uh, a demonstration of this is now testing 1 2 3 testing 1 2 3 as you can see the uh, SWR is quite low at the moment and RF power is increasing with the uh, voice uh, after these, this check, you can increase your RF power to transmit farther and uh, clear signals to other people. Uh, for the time being, we'll keep it low. After you've tested it out, you, uh, in order to establish communication with someone, it is important to uh, know the uh, code that you, uh, is for yourself. Your own call sign is what it's called. Uh, here at Fontes, our call sign is PI5FTS. The PI is, stands for the Netherlands. The 5 is an institute. And the FTS is a suffix, which is for Fontes. Now, when you're communicating with someone, you would not say PI5FTS. You would use the code, the NATO code. So this would be translated into Papa India 5, Foxtrot Tango Sierra, in our case. And when you begin, and when you want to broadcast that you're available for communication, you, you call what is a CQ. So for example, you say CQ twice, followed by your call sign. So in our case, it will be CQ, CQ, Papa, India 5, Foxtrot, Tango, Sierra. CQ, Papa, India 5, Foxtrot, Tango, Sierra. Now, if you hear someone else who is transmitting a CQ request, you do not have to respond with CQ and your own transmission back to him. You may just call out his call sign that is being transmitted and say your call sign. For example, in this case, if someone is calling CQ uh, India, Zulu, 3, Canada, Lima, Echo, you would respond with 
India, Zulu, three, uh, India, Zulu, three, Canada, Lima, Echo, this is Papa India, five, Foxtrot, Tango, Sierra, as a response to him. And this would allow you to establish communication with him. There are multiple other uh, codes that are also being used. For example, 88, one of our favorites, as well as uh, 73, which is a weather request. And usually a discussion can be had about that. Speaking of for May establishing contact, today the weather is really bad outside. It's very, very cloudy. So it, this poses a challenge sometimes for uh, establishing communication with someone because your signal just gets dissipated in the atmosphere. As you can see in the waterfall, there aren't that many very strong signals. And the ones that are very strong, they're just noise. As I just clearly demonstrated. There are some people who are calling CQ, but it's really hard to distinguish between their words and it's hard to get a proper signal because of the bad weather today. So weather does really play an important role when trying to talk to someone or using ham radio. Italy 5, Japan, Victor, America. This is Papa, India 5, Foxtrot, Tango, Sierra. Italy 5, Japan, Victor, America. This is Papa, India 5, Foxtrot, Tango, Sierra, responding to your CQ. Italy 5, Japan, Victor, America. This is Papa, India 5, Foxtrot, Tango, Sierra, responding to your CQ. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You 5 and 7, 5 and 7 in the call. Name is Carlo, go ahead. Hello, Carlo. This is Tabrez. You are 5 7, you are also 5 7. 5 7 in this scenario is a representation of a good signal. So that means we've made good signal with him. India 5, Japan, Victor Alpha. The frequency is uh, clear on my end. I can hear you loud and fine. Um, I think the weather is playing a bit of a, a role here in uh, some interference with us. Otherwise, I can hear you just fine and uh, the frequency is not in use. Uh, we are contacting you from the Netherlands. Uh, you mentioned you have established contact with us before. Arrivederci, uh, India 5, J Japan, Victor Alpha. I hope you have uh, nice holidays and uh, Happy New Year to you. Uh, thank you for uh, talking to us today, and I hope you have a nice evening. Uh, over. <laughs>